Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here. We're really glad you're with us. We pray our service will be a blessing to you. This weekend, we have the 15th Sunday after Pentecost. In our service today, oh, All right. For those of you who are home, uh, somebody was ringing the bells, so we paused. And we've got a few more coming in. In our service today, we're going to consider the command Jesus gives to us, uh, especially to listen to what God tells us. So we'll start our service with the singing of the first hymn, hymn 195. <laughs> We'll ask those who are present to rise. We have gathered today to worship the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I rejoiced with those who said to me, Lord, I love the house where you reside. Know that the Lord is God. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courtyards with praise. For the Lord is good, his mercy endures forever.
And we pray. Lord Jesus Christ, preserve all believers with your never-failing mercy. Through your Spirit, enable us to fight against the sinful nature and avoid whatever is wicked and harmful. Please guide us on the way that leads to our salvation. We pray this through you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. Our first scripture lesson today is written in the second chapter of Paul's letter to the Galatians. We start with verse 16, and he says, We know that a person is not justified by the works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. So we also believed in Christ Jesus, that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law, because no one will be justified by the works of the law. But if, while seeking to be justified in Christ, we ourselves were also found to be sinners, then is Christ a servant of sin? Certainly not. In fact, if I build up again those things that I destroyed, I bring on myself the judgment of being a lawbreaker. Indeed, through the law, I died to the law that I might live for God. I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I am now living in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So far, our first lesson. And we'll rise for the gospel lesson. The Holy Gospel is written in the seventh chapter of Luke. We start with verse 36. A certain one of the Pharisees asked Jesus to eat with him. Jesus entered the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. Just then a sinful woman from that town learned that he was reclining in the Pharisee's house. She brought an alabaster jar of perfume, stood behind him near his feet weeping, and began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she began to wipe them with her hair while also kissing his feet and anointing them with the perfume. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would realize who is touching him and what kind of woman she is, because she is a sinner. Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. He said, Teacher, say it. A certain money lender had two debtors. The one owed 500, den or 500 denarii and the other 50. When they could not pay, he forgave them both. So which of them will love him more? Simon answered, I suppose the one who had the larger debt forgiven. Then he told him, you have judged correctly. Turning toward the woman, he said to Simon, do you see this woman? I entered your house, but you did not give me water for my feet. Yet she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but she, from the time I entered, has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with perfume. Therefore I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven. That is why she loves so much. But the one who is forgiven little loves little. Then Jesus said to her, your sins have been forgiven. Those reclining at the table with him began to say among themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? He said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. We, we, do, we are not, you may be seated. We are not going to be installing the uh, church council people tonight, so we'll uh, skip over those hymns that we were going to sing as a lead into that, and we'll go right to the sermon hymn 476.
and we'll rise. From infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. The words of God will consider on this, the weekend of the 15th Sunday after Pentecost, are written in the 12th chapter of the Gospel of St. Mark. We start with verse 29. One of the experts, or 28 rather, one of the experts of the law approached after he had heard their discussion. When he saw that Jesus had answered them well, he asked Jesus, which commandment is the greatest of all? Jesus answered, the most important is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. This is God's word. Please be seated. In the name of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the, one, the only God, the one true God, your friends in Christ. The question, which commandment is the greatest of all? The answer, well, part of the answer is pretty well known, eh? In fact, part of the answer is one that many of us have memorized, remember, in confirmation or in Sunday school. The part that we normally focus on, hmm? love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Hmm? And love your neighbor as yourself. Hmm? Now that's only part of the answer, though. And people sometimes forget or overlook that before Jesus says, Love the Lord your God, love your neighbor, he says something else. And again, remember the question, which, which, is the greatest, which commandment is the greatest of all? And what's the first thing he says? Hmm? The most important is, hear, O Israel. Hear, listen to the Lord. Before he commands us to love God and others, he says, hear. So before I think about doing, I need to be hearing, listening. So as I seek to, to serve God in this life, I need to keep first things first. Listen to the Lord. So let's use that thought as our theme then as we look at these words before us today. Again, note how Jesus starts off. The most important is hear O Israel, in Israel, God's people, referring to God's chosen people. And God's chosen people are to hear. They are to listen. And what are they to hear? First of all, the first thing Jesus says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. Hmm? First things first. Again, before he tells us to love the Lord, he tells us that the Lord is our God. We are his people, his chosen people. And how did that happen? It happened because of the Lord and what he has done. He's seen the situation that we are in, and he's got compassion on us. The story is told of a, oh, of a fellow who, came, who was walking along and saw something on the side of the road, and he realizes this is a dog. It, it, it was scrawny, malnourished, uh, it was sickly. In fact, he first looked at it, he thought it was dead. But he bent down, touched it, and realized, no, it's alive. Uh, his heart went out to it, he picked it up, brought it home, got it medicine, got it food, nurtured it back to health. The only reason the dog was alive is because this man had compassion, and did what was necessary to help the dog. And basically, that's the way it is with us and the Lord, that he has seen our situation and had compassion on us. He's taken action to help us. The Lord knows what I am, that by nature I'm 
I'm dead in sin. Because of sin, I, I sometimes deal with fears. I sometimes wrestle with guilt and shame. Uh, sometimes I just feel awful because of things I've done in my life. The Lord sees me, and he knows that. And he also knows what I deserve because of my sins. I'm going to die one day. And when I die, I deserve to be in agony, to be in torment for all eternity. And there's nothing I can do to save myself from that. So the Lord sees the situation that I'm in and decides to take action to help me. And why? Because he is the Lord. His name reminds us of who he is and what he is, that he is the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God. He's a God who chooses to love sinners even though they don't deserve it. And there's comfort in that. God loving me doesn't depend on what I am. It doesn't depend on me being something or doing something. God loves me regardless of who I am or what I've done because he is God, and as God, that's what he chooses to do. He chooses to love sinners even though they don't deserve to be loved. And I don't know how many things I've done in my life, all of us can say that, that would give God every reason to not love me, to not have compassion on me, to not help me, but he chooses to do it anyway. And in love, he sent his son to take care of things for me. As a just God, uh, he demands there has to be payment, and that payment has to be punishment. There has to be punishment for sin before he'll let it go. And I could suffer forever and never pay what he desires. But Jesus came and did it for me. He did it all on the cross. And because of what Jesus has done, I know God is not angry at me. Because of what Jesus has done, God is not going to punish me. Because of what Jesus has done, God is not going to turn against me. Because of what Jesus has done, I can be sure that God will always love me. He will always guide me. He will always help me. He's always working to bless me. Because of what Jesus has done, I know I'm going to live forever and one day be in God's presence and beautiful glory that will never end. See, Jesus has won all these things for me, and he gives them as a free gift. No strings attached. There's not a single thing we need to do but in order to get these gifts. He's won them for us, and we enjoy those blessings when we believe in him. And even then, God has come to us to help us because it's God, the Holy Spirit, who works in us to lead us to know and believe the facts that are told us about Jesus in the Bible, to put our trust in Jesus and who he is and what he's done. Through that faith, then, we enjoy these blessings as our own. And the Lord wants me to know this. So he says, hear, O Israel, God's people, listen. The Lord is our God. He's done everything so that he is our God and we are his children. He says, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Yes, he's one. And the Bible tells us that there's this mystery that even though he's one, he's three at the same time, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but this is the one true God, the only God there is. He's the God who has loved me more than I will ever realize. He's the God who gives me blessings that I could never get for myself. He's the God who loves me and guides me. And he wants me to listen to him. When I listen to him, then I know who he is. I need to listen so that I know how he feels about me and, how he's, and what he's done for me. I need to listen so that I know what he promises me. I need to listen so that I know what he wants me to do so I know how I can honor him and thank him for all he's done for me. And he tells me that. Yes, he's my God. And he tells me then, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Hmm. Love the Lord your God. Care about him more than you care about anything else. Be devoted to him above all else. Care about him more than you care about anything else. Care about him with every part of your being, with every part of your existence. 
all your feelings, all your desires, all your emotions, make sure that they are in line with what He wants. Your whole person, you as a person, every part of you, make sure you, that you shape your life around and that your life is in line with what He wants. Make sure that your thoughts, your attitudes, your beliefs, all those things are shaped around and are in line with what He wants. And what you do, the way you use your talents and abilities, the way you live your life, make sure that it's all shaped around and in line with what He wants. And what do I know about what He wants? How do I know it? Hear, O Israel. Listen to Him. As I go to His Word, then I know how He wants me to shape my thoughts, my beliefs, my attitudes, my ideas, my feelings, my emotions around what He wants. Hmm? And so as I go through life, I'm constantly asking, is the way I'm acting, is this in line with what God wants? The way I'm speaking, is this in line with what God wants? Hmm? Uh, the things that I'm doing, the way that I'm using my talents and my abilities, is this in line with what He wants me to do? My feelings, my emotions, are these things in line with what He wants? If not, I have to fight against them. I have to rise above them. I have to get rid of the sinful feelings, get over them, and I have to be living the way that He wants. Again, that's how I love the Lord my God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. And again, as I'm focusing on Him and com completely on Him and shaping my life around what He wants me to do, that also then has an effect on how I view others and how I treat others. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And I know how I want to take care of myself, <coughs> how I want to meet my own needs, how I want to do things that are, that are benefic beneficial to me, things that will be a blessing for me. So just as I'm concerned about what's best for me, in the same way I'm to be concerned about what's best for others, to do what will truly benefit them. And again, how do I know what's truly best for me? How do I know what's truly best for others? Hear, O Israel. Listen, listen to the Lord. He's the one who tells me, first of all, how to view other people. That every single human being is someone God has created in a unique and special way. Regardless of their skin color, regardless of whether they're big or small, male or female, young or old, regardless of what their background is or what their job is, God has created them in a unique and special way. And He wants me to do what's best for them, to care about them, to be speaking to them the way He wants, to be helping them the way that He wants. Again, just as I want people to be good to me and care about me, do what's best for me, regardless of what they think of me, I am to care about others and do what's best for them according to what God says in His Word. And when I think about what's best for others, well, I know that more than anything else, they also need to know the Lord is God. They need to know what the Lord has done for them. They need to know that God loves them in spite of the mistakes they have made, and that Jesus died for them regardless of who they are or what they may have done that there's forgiveness for their sins, that God wants them to be his child. And so they also need to hear, to listen to what the Lord has said. So I want to do what I can, and as we do that as Christians, working together, using what we are and what we have, so we can get the word out so that others can hear and know the Lord is God, the Lord loves them, the Lord has done what's necessary so that they can be his forgiven children and be his children forever. And it all goes back to 
listening to the Lord. And think again, which commandment is the greatest of all? And many times we just go right into what comes later. Yes, it's true. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Those are commands God gives us. But before he gives us those commands, Jesus has given us another command. Which is the greatest commandment of all? The first thing Jesus says. The first thing Jesus says, the most important is, Hear, O Israel. Do you want to know for sure who the true God is? Do you want to know for sure how he feels about you? Do you want to know for sure what he has done for you and what he promises you? You want to know for sure how you can honor him and serve him in your life? You want to know for sure how you can be a blessing to others while you're in this world? You want to know for sure what's going to happen to you when you die and where you're going to be and the blessings you're going to enjoy? You want to know those things for sure? Then first things first. Hmm? First things first. Hear, O Israel. You who are God's people, listen. Listen to the Lord. Amen. You may remain seated. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And we'll continue with the general prayer. <coughs> and we pray. O God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, we praise you for your great love and your wonderful works. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask you to send the Holy Spirit to work in our hearts so that we will always know and believe the truth about the one true God. Dear Lord, through faith in your Son, we are your dear children. Enjoy the greatest blessings of all, the blessings of salvation. While we are in this world, Lord, it is our privilege and responsibility to serve you in our lives. We offer two special prayers today, Lord. First of all, for Seneva Kam, who is hospitalized. We ask, Lord, that you would watch over her and give her strength. If it's your will, grant healing to her and enable her to, re to be leaving the hospital soon. Help her to keep on focusing on you and cling clinging all the more firmly to your promises so that she can have the strength and comfort they are meant to give. We also pray, Lord, for Marie Brick, who underwent surgery this past week. We thank you, Lord, that the surgery was a success. We ask that you would help her with the pain and the discomfort that comes after surgery. Please, Lord, grant her complete healing. Again, watch over her. Help her to be careful, Lord, so that, again, the healing will be complete. And also with her, help her to keep on praying to you, looking to you, trusting you, clinging to your promises, always sure that you love her and are with her and will take care of her. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petition. We bring these requests before you in the name of our Savior Jesus. We trust that you will hear us for his sake. Please also join in praying the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Almighty God, please hear us and help us as we confess our sins to you. O Lord, we confess that we are by nature sinful and that we have daily sinned against you in our thoughts, words, and actions. We admit that we deserve death and your eternal curse and punishment in hell. But you sent your son Jesus to be cursed in our place and to take our sins away. We ask and trust that you forgive all our sins because of Jesus, our Savior. While on the cross, Jesus said, It is finished. On the third day, he rose again from the dead to prove that he is indeed the Son of God and that he truly has done all that is necessary so that we are completely forgiven for all sins and are declared righteous in God's sight. Therefore, I declare to you that all your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So then there is now no condemnation. The one who believes in the Son. We continue with our preparation for Holy Communion. Do you believe that God has forgiven all your sins because of Jesus' perfect life and innocent death? If so, answer, yes, I believe. Do you believe that in Holy Communion the Lord is performing a miracle and is giving you Jesus' body and blood in, with, and under the bread and the wine? If so, answer, yes, I believe. Do you believe that through this sacrament, the Lord is reminding you again of the forgiveness Jesus won for you and that he is also giving you again the forgiveness Jesus won for you? If so, answer, yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. Do you believe that through the Lord's Supper, the Holy Spirit will strengthen your faith and make you more sure of God's love and the salvation he has freely given you in his Son, Jesus? If so, answer, yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. O Christ, Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us and grant us your peace. Amen. Before we continue with the distribution, we have a couple of announcements to share for you. 
First of all, as is noted in the bulletin, we practice close communion, meaning that we ask only those who are members of our congregation or another congregation in fellowship with us to come forward. By doing this, we don't mean to pass judgment on anyone's faith, but we know that while the Lord's Supper offers wonderful blessings, it can also cause great harm. So we always seek to study the scriptures with people before we invite them to receive the sacrament. Uh, today, we will practice what we call continuous flow. Uh, when Don is up to the front here and we're set, you can come up to the door. When he gives you a nod, you can walk over to him. He will put the wafer in your hand without touching you. And after that, you can come here. I will give you the wine to drink. And then you can put the empty cup uh, just beyond the baptismal font. So we will continue with our preparation. We invite you to come forward now.
And now may this, the true body, and the true blood of our Lord and Savior, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith until life everlasting. Take heart. Your sins are forgiven. Depart in peace. Amen. And we'll pray. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for the privilege of gathering together today with our fellow Christians to hear your word and receive your sacrament. Please send the Holy Spirit to work through these blessed means of grace to strengthen our faith and to keep all of us faithful to you. Watch over all of us and keep us faithful so that one day we all may be with you in the blessed joys of heaven. We pray this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. And we'll close with the final hymn verse. Good evening once again. Thank you for being here. We're glad you're here. We pray the service was a blessing for you. We'll highlight uh, a couple of things in the bulletin going on through the week. We have DOE and Council. This Wednesday, we'll start our midweek Bible class again, and then confirmation class Wednesday night. Uh, next weekend, we're going to have confirmation. So Saturday uh, in the morning, we'll have rehearsal. It should be very short. Oh, 20 minutes perhaps to get things ready. Then we know at the afternoon we have a wedding. And then after that at 5 p.m. we'll have our regular service. And then Sunday will be confirmation service. So, it, um, and then the following week we're going to celebrate the 100th anniversary of our district with a special service. That'll be on the 26th and 27th. And they are looking for volunteers uh, to help with hot lunch days. Those are the things we wanted to share with you. We say again thank you for being here. Uh, good evening, everyone, and God bless you. <laughs>